Jesus to the many nations of the world. I'm a living witness that prayer works. Amen. I'm a living witness that prayer works. Hallelujah. When I think about my father, Apostle Goss, a few words came to mind. The first one was versatility. This brother could connect with anybody, anywhere, any place, anytime. Rich, poor, black, white, male, female, Caribbean, uh, uh, intelligent, uh, whatever you were, however you were, connected and wired. Apostle God could connect with you. And there's so many people, as they grow in ministry, they forget about the little people. Apostle God could still reach out even to small children. Uh, hence, when my, grand, my, my children were born, uh, we saw Apostle God's kicking gear. Amen. He connected with them. Uh, and, and, and for the most part, I think they sometimes loved him more than they loved me. And that's perfectly fine. That's all right. Uh, I'm getting over that. Uh, the second thing, uh, when I think about Apostle Doss, is the word consistency. He was consistent. He was stable. Uh, he was the kind of person, the type of ministry that you knew wasn't going to change on you. And, and his attitude wasn't going to change. He didn't flip. He wasn't bipolar in the spirit. He knew who he was. Whether you liked it, amen. Whether you liked what he had to say or not, you knew what the answer was going to be. You knew how he was going to flow. And so consistency helps to bring stability in our lives. And this man was truly known for consistency. The second, third thing uh, is positivity. You never heard him say a negative thing. Oh, you can't pay the bills all weekend. No, it was always faith. Amen. And you saw faith in action. You saw faith in work. Some of you might not understand, but I'm being told that this man uh, who died in 83 lived by faith since his mid-20s or early 20s. He lived by faith. Do you understand what that means? Live by faith without a congregation. Live by faith without a paycheck. Live by faith without having a business. He just lived by faith. And literally all of what you see here came from faith. Came from nothing. Amen. He lived by faith. And he was positive about everything. Everything, everything. You never heard a negative word come out of his mouth. Attitude was always positive. And the fourth thing I would say is reliability. If he said he was going to do something, then he did everything within his power to make sure that would happen. The title of my sermon today is Where Do We Go From Here? Where Do We Go From Here? As I was sitting in the, the service today, something funny happened. I have to share this with you. So, as the officiator, Pastor Gwen, uh, by the way, can you stand, Pastor Gwen, for a moment? This Pastor Gwen, uh, this is the gentleman who has been installed as the pastor of BT.com while I now move to Charlotte by faith to plant a new church for the Lord. That's, that's Pastor Gwen. Amen. Many, many. No, he's not many, many. No, he's, he's himself. But he's carrying on the work there at BT.com. And for those who don't know, amen, we moved to Charlotte by faith, and then Apostle Doss died about five days after, you know, we moved. Uh, but we were doing it all by faith to the glory of God. So we're sitting here in the service, and uh, so now the officiator, the MC, gets me and says, now we will have the reading of the Old Testament, followed by the reading of the New Testament. So Michael Doss taps me on my leg. So you stand up right and see what you want. That's Michael Doss. Turn around. And say, there you go. Sit down. Michael Doss taps my leg. He says, Daddy. I said, yes. He said, the whole thing? <laughs> I responded by saying, yes. <laughs> and then I said, I'm just kidding. He knows he's in the kind of family where that could have actually happened. So. <laughs> no matter that, we got to honor him. Every verse in the Bible must be read to honor him. <laughs> then we got to read it in Hebrew and Greek. <laughs> and the nice the original Torah and the Dead Sea Scrolls will be brought in. Here is the present state of being. It's where you are. 
And the funny thing about here is, if you look at your present life where you are right now, most of us, uh, uh, we're, we're not satisfied, we're not happy. We're always looking for what's going to come next. Some of us here are very happy and excited and don't want to move forward, but whether we like it or not, we're here. You're here right now. Whatever your age is, whatever your class is financially, whatever your physical state, physical situation, we pray. We believe God to raise him up, to heal him, but you know what? He's here. This is where he is in life right now. Whether we like it or not, he has gone to be with glory. This is his here. And his here is not on earth, but our here still is. And so the question is, where do we go from here? What do we do? I want to examine a few things the Holy Spirit put into my heart. And if y'all know me, what did he give to me? Yeah, right while I was sitting right here in the funeral. Amen. I had no sermon when I came to you because that's how my father raised me. Amen. How, how come y'all know so many worship songs? Because Pastor Boss was buying time to draw the charts and come up with the sermon while you guys were worshiping. Amen. That's why we worship at Crisco. Praise the Lord. Let them sing another song. First example I want us to look at today is 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. And we're going to be dancing somewhere around verse 3. 2 Kings chapter 7, around verse 3. This is the story in the Bible of the four lepers. And what I want us to take from this story is this. That until a certain point in time came to pass, the four lepers had become accustomed to a consistent way of life. Whether it was a good life or a bad life, that's not for us to judge. You might say, oh, look at those poor people. No, 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 they ain't had to work. <laughs> they was chilling. No, no, nobody messed with them. No, nobody robbed the leper. But whatever the situation is, they had become accustomed to it. And, and the situation was this. The lepers would sit outside of the city gate because of their condition. And for medical reasons primarily, they were not allowed to mingle with anybody else because they had an incurable disease. Back then, it could not be taken care of. And so they had to separate themselves. But because they were still Hebrew, they were still Jews, according to the tradition, the law, that no one was supposed to starve. Everybody was supposed to have something to eat. And you take care of those who couldn't do for themselves. And so they received food for free from inside of the city. Maybe what was left over, maybe what others did not want. They received that food, and it wasn't a great way to live, but it was a living. And so as they were there, receiving the surplus and the abundance of what was taking place in the city, something happened. See, the key to my sermon today is this, something has happened. Mm -hmm. So where do we go from here? Because until something happens, you get accustomed to your source. Amen. Amen. Ain't no more calling me tonight for prayer. You even ask me to pray for you, now you violate the scripture. <laughs> Don't be calling him up in the dead and come visit you. He's not coming to visit you. Where do we go from here? The question, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. Why sit we here till we die? The four lepers, in order to live, had to get up and they had to move forward. Whether they wanted to or not, whether they felt like it or not, whether it seemed convenient or not, they knew that's what they had to do. And saints, we have to get up and we have to move forward. Why sit we here lest we die? We got to move forward. God has a work for us to do. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Jesus Christ has come, lived for many years, did ministry for about three and a half years, died on the cross, had risen from the dead. All power and miracles that you could imagine from beginning to ending of his ministry had taken place. And here are all the brethren. He has taught them. He's trained them. He's commissioned them. And the Bible says, now the angels came and he starts to ascend into heaven and they begin to look up and gaze at him. 
guess that's all they were going to play to do, just to keep looking up and gazing. And then the angel said, look, why stand you here gazing? What are you doing? Just leave me. Where do we go from here? You know, we, we, we gave you a couple of days of standing and gaze, but once this thing is closed, ain't no more gazing than looking at him. We've got to move on. Where do we go from here? Here's where they went from here. They had to take the teaching he had given to them. They had to take the example, the lifestyle that Christ Jesus had taught them and showed to them, and they had to emulate that. They had to carry that. They had to go to you, therefore. And one thing you will know about John Dodge, here's what I believe. I believe the word of God is true. Whatever God says is going to happen or should happen with, you can either participate or you'll be manipulated to do it. So when God says go ye therefore, we can go by choice or go by force. Here's how you go by choice. You go on your own. Here's how you go by force. Stay together. Decide not to go. And then persecution comes upon the church. You will find yourself being a missionary whether you want it to or not. I choose to go by choice so I can be one step ahead of the judgment of God. I learned that from him. Amen. I believe one of the only reasons that, that God took him home is because it's more expedient for him to go. Some of us would rely too much on, on a man. Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. So God does all these great amazing things for Moses. And the children of Israel are finally released from Egypt to go and worship. And as Moses is proudly and happily victoriously marching them away from uh, from Egypt, God allows Pharaoh's heart to change one more time, and Pharaoh now releases the armies against them. And so God has brought them out of Egypt just to bring them to the Red Sea, and now they're stuck. Some of you feel like you're stuck. Where do you go from here? Save God who brought us this far. That same knowledge you have in your hand. The same teaching that worked back then. Come on, the same rod. Get all that stuff in Egypt. All you got to do is take that rod and put it in the Red Sea. Apply the teaching. Apply the prayer life. One of the things I learned in my early years, because some of you might not know this, I left Apostle Dyson's ministry for one year. And I went with what looked like the more exciting, flashy ministry. The one that actually had sound equipment. Amen. <laughs> and instruments that were in tune. I, I went with the more flashy looking stuff. And, and I told Apostle Doss, you know, that I, I want to go and help another ministry for about a year. But in my heart, I was gone. You know, old Indian man can help me reach this hip hop generation up in the United States. I can beatbox and he can. I can do all this and he can't. I said, he can't be my apostle because he doesn't know how to flow in the U.S. So I rolled out for one good year. I saw what I needed to see. I was right back home. Amen. <laughs> I stayed right here. But, but what the Lord showed me, he said, you don't have a covering to help you do what you can do already. You have a covering to cover the areas of your life where you're falling short in. And he said, you can rap, you can sing, you can do music, you can do choirs, but you have a horrible prayer life and your character stinks. And so what God does to move us forward is he dries up 
the brook and he rewrites the ravens to go somewhere else. But the question is, where do we go from here? This is the way God used to do it. No, it's a new day. It's a new thing. It's a move forward. Amen. And we've got to get up and we've got to go forward. And what you have to understand about this, which is, I guess you would say complicated, but sometimes tricky, is that the devil didn't provide the brook. The devil didn't provide the raven. God did. But many of us don't understand what God is, is giving us a temporary. That's why the tabernacle in the wilderness was, first of all, it was not made out of mortar. It was not made out of bricks. It was made by material that could be carried. It was portable because it was a temporary covering. But when they finally came to the place of victory, they could build Solomon's temple where the stuff was heavy, man. The stuff was thick and it could not be moved. And some of us get some accustomed living in tents that will never come to the place where a foundation can build something for the Lord. Here's what the Holy Spirit just told them. I gave you a tent until the apostle could lay the foundation. Did you get that in your spirit? You lived in a tent until the foundation could be laid. Now we've got to come out of the tent and start building on the foundation that was laid. So you can handle it. The foundation can handle it. Stop living. Tell your neighbor, stop living in tents. Come on, tell your neighbor, stop living in tents. Where do we go from here? Last one. Story, story of David. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 3. David had just come back home from a victory. David had just come back home from being overcome. He comes back home and finds out that his, his house is in a wreck. Wives kidnapped, stuff burned down, everything gone and stolen. He wasn't out smoking drugs. He wasn't out, you know, at the girly bars. He was out doing what he was supposed to do. Where do we go from here? Pursue. Remember, Chris Gump, one of the one of the move on conventions? To pursue. To recover. That is what we are going to do. Today, we've been blessed to have a father, a friend, a mentor, an instructor, a helper, an example. A supporter, an inspiration, and a true man of God. He was an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, a Sunday school teacher, a singer, a tambourine player, and the driver of the Pray or Parish van. God has given us what most of us would agree and probably say the closest living example we have ever seen of someone who is like Jesus Christ. That's not because we just want to say that as an organization of people, but I can give you a list of folk that can preach on Sunday, but they send pictures to little boys on Monday. They can sing and shout on Friday, but they're sleeping with who they were sitting with and shot with on Saturday. We can talk about the love of God, but they got their hands stealing money out of the church. He wasn't perfect, but for me, I've seen a lot of ministers, pastors, leaders, many parts of the world, I would say, he was the closest example that we had of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means we're in trouble. That means you're in trouble. Because we're a witness. It could be done. Maybe he wasn't a man. He's a man. That's why he's dead. We saw the example. It was lived before us. Now we're accountable. We must go forth. We must fulfill what God has called us to do. Apostle says he wants to run with winners. I want to run with winners. I'm 41 years old. In America, they have a very profound saying, and nobody got time for that. I'm 41 years old. I don't want to do things like I did in my early 20s. I don't 
have time to experiment and check out ministries and check out folks. I want to lock arms with those I've seen faithful for the last 10, 15, 20, 30. Even if you're blessings, even if you don't love the other, I know your character is good. I know your pride is where it needs to be. And if you haven't let me down thus far, I don't have time to go looking for somebody new. I'm going to stick with what God has given to me. We're going to stay by the stuff. In America, we have another saying. We're going to work it. Amen. The woman said, I need to be blessed by God. The prophet said, what do you already have? I got some oil. He said, we're going to work that. I got some meal. We're going to work that. Crisco or whoever you are, whatever you call yourself and moving forward, it's not time to look for a new ministry. It's not time to look for a new covering. It's time to work with what you got and to work it. Because God is going to make a difference. He's going to take that oil. He's going to take that meal. Because apostle might be dead, but his prayers are not dead. Apostle might be dead, but his destiny is not dead. Apostle might be dead, but the calling that is upon his life, it lives on. I'm 
thing walked into the right thing. Sometimes they used to understand. They used to think, you know, that you know, that even times when I feel like he should have stood up for me. But I, I grew and I learned to understand because he would always say, I would take back to him. And then God, you put it in God's hands. And sometimes God will always do it quickly. Like you think in how he should do it. And something in my hands I won't be done. But you know, he prayed a long time that God would sit on my life. I used to want to work my stuff out. Get it in fast, man. I couldn't wait for the next day to tell him more fair. I did it then. Like one time when when the uh, pastor John was small, left him, you know, we went to church and the young lady came back. When she came back, when we came back, he said he didn't go to bed in time. I said, I'm gonna wake him up and I'm gonna wake him up and start him. Then he said, Don't do that, <laughs> And next morning the child will not even know his time. But I did I woke him up. I did. <laughs> next morning I was the loser. He didn't remember that I was trying to have a loser. I told him in your haste. He the child didn't learn anything because I was in a haste. I want to prove a point. But you know, always you're proving a point is all or not always right to So I learned. And when he prayed for you, he prayed the Lord was sitting there. And the Lord slowed me down. And he started to become like him. Waiting, for, not procrastinating, but waiting for the right time. I watched him. I always been waiting for the right time. When I think you should do it now, correct it now. No, he waited for the right time. And then when I, when, when, when he had to correct the person, then he do a whole thing. I think that's a key thing. Come on, person. He does a teaching. But I'm learning. I am still, I'm still the same, but I'm learning. And I, I'm the missing teacher. I'm the missing. Oh, God. I know that one day you would have to. But I don't think it would be this soon. I don't think so. I used to struggle with unforgiveness. I would keep people in my heart and hurt me and wound me for a long time. I would forgive, I would hold on. And he would tell me, say, oh, you've done a bad thing. You need to let things go. Don't let people wrap them around your, your spirit. He said, that's why I buy a prayer now. So I can face the day. So when whatever comes, I know how to throw it on the Holy Spirit. And I watch it. And I'm still learning, I, you know, I, I forgive it more better now than I was. <laughs> but I am missing. Can we say that from the ocean of life? I think it's a choir when you sing. Choir when you sing, ocean of life. Would y'all stand? Now, please stand.
you can kill. That which God has put in you. She has carried. So I have asked you today. Father, help us. Because we do not know all time. We ask you, Lord, she. We stand here as your children. We stand here as your son. We ask you, oh God, we can tell other people. And we have listened hope. Oh, Spirit of God, we ask, I ask you today that you will help all of us that we will know how to let go and let go. So that we can we can align ourselves with that you want to work to us. The ministries are forth in the state of life of the Lord. So far we are for today. We give us worship. Let it go. And let the soul come. Let the soul come. That we are able to say that the people are not going to quickly need to kiss anybody. And I used to do it. And I would hold things. But I'm so glad that you can be Birth, you have to bring forth after us. Lord Jesus, if you sing this song, willing to suffer, <laughs> others to say, Let that first. Would you put that first? <laughs> Oh. 